The history of tobacco starts in Central America 400 years ago, when it was cultivated for pipe and crude cigar smoking. Sir Walter Raleigh discovered the use of tobacco in Virginia in the 16th century. And Virginia tobacco is still the most widely used today, but no longer the only variety. The cultivated tobacco plant is called Nicotiana tobacum, and it was developed from the original wild-growing Nicotiana rustica. In fact, the tobacco plant is from the same family as the tomato, pepper, potato, and petunia. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. But perhaps we better just stick to tobacco for the moment. The world's annual tobacco production comes from five main growing areas, which produce the three types of tobacco plant. Virginia, Burley, and Oriental. Virginia is still grown in Virginia and other parts of North America, also in Africa, the Far East, and South America. Burley is a North American variety also, grown mainly in Kentucky and Tennessee. Oriental tobacco is grown in Greece, Turkey, the Middle East, and some parts of Asia. Tobacco seeds are extremely small, with approximately 300,000 seeds per ounce. They look very similar to your morning coffee powder, and we do a similar thing with them. That is, we mix them with water in order to spread them on open-air seed beds. Some six weeks after seeding, the young plants are strong enough to be planted in the fields for full cultivation the plant flowers and the seed head is topped or removed so that the leaves can develop fully. A Virginia plant grows to two meters in height. Its leaves are broad and light in color. They're picked selectively in stages starting from the bottom upwards during the ripening process. Burley has darker leaves which are harvested by the whole plant. The oriental plant has a different character, due to the stonier soil of the regions in which it's cultivated. It reaches only about one meter in height and has leaves of a smaller and more delicate nature, highly prized for their subtle and distinctive flavor. They too are picked selectively to allow full ripening of each leaf. The tobacco plant is perishable, and 90% of its leaf weight is made up of water. The only way to preserve it after harvesting is to dry it by the method known as curing, either by flu, air, sun, or fire curing. In flu curing, the leaf is hung in specially designed barns, heated by carefully controlled fires outside the barn, which supply heat to iron flues inside. This stops the fires contaminating the leaf. Moisture from the leaf escapes through vents. Flu curing takes five to eight days, producing a bright yellow leaf with a mellow smoking flavor. Air curing is possibly the oldest method, using open-sided barns that control the flow of air. It takes six to twelve weeks, depending upon the climatic conditions of the country using the process. Air-cured tobacco is often referred to as light, medium, or dark air-cured. The color and flavor of the cured leaf is determined by the time taken to cure it. Leaf cured quickly will be light brown, while leaf cured slowly will be dark and full in flavor. Sun curing requires long periods of sunshine. The leaf is first stored in dark, cool sheds until yellow, then hung on drying racks in the sun for four to six weeks. The cured leaf is light brown. In a fire curing barn, leaf is dried over open fires of specially selected wood or sawdust for about 13 weeks to produce a very dark leaf with a distinctive smoky flavor. 
Fire-cured leaves are often fermented after curing to reduce the harshness of taste produced by this process. Virginia is traditionally flu-cured. Burley is mostly air-cured. Oriental is normally sun-cured. The cured crop is then sorted according to length of leaf, colour quality and grade and taken to market to meet the first important customers in the long process of becoming cigarettes, the tobacco buyers. Buyers from the world's major manufacturers meet at tobacco auctions where they begin to make a close inspection of the crops on offer. Then the auction proceeds.